Hello and welcome to Excel Calendar with One Formula. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. What we are trying to build is this graphical calendar. We want to allow the user to enter a month like February and we want the calendar to update. Maybe the user wants to see December, that's fine. Maybe the user wants to see January of 2020, that's fine. Maybe March of 2010, that's fine. You get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and clear this uh, worksheet out first. Okay, now that it's clear, we're going to do this in three steps. First, we're going to set up the structure of the calendar. Then we're going to write the formula that creates those days. And then the third step is we're going to go ahead and apply some cosmetics, get it cleaned up, and apply some formatting and stuff like that. So first, the setup. We want to give the user a couple of cells where they can type in the desired month and year. Um, if you want, you can apply a cell style. I like input, and that just lets the user know that their input is requested in these two cells. Next, we want to create that calendar header, which includes the month and year. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the date function. And we're going to tell Excel to create a date for this year, for this month, for day number one. Okay, and it returns January 1st of 2030. And by the way, don't worry about this formatting. We're going to update this when we get to the cosmetic section. Then let's go ahead and set up our, our day labels. So I'm just going to go with something simple. I'm going to go ahead and just center all this stuff so it's easier to see. Okay, now our setup is complete. So now let's move to the next step, which is writing the formula that populates all of these day values. Now at the heart of this formula is the sequence function. And what the sequence function does is it allows us to create a sequence of numbers and we can specify the number of rows, columns, the start value, and the step value. So let's just break it down and start with the, with the first idea here. Let's say we want to create a sequence of numbers that spans 10 rows. Then we would define 10 for the rows argument, hit enter, and now we got it. What if we want to see 10 rows and 10 columns? Then we define the second argument and hit enter. And now we've got it. We can also identify the start value. Maybe instead of starting at the default value of 1, maybe we want it to start at 100. So we can identify the start value like this. And maybe instead of stepping by 1 or incrementing the value by 1, maybe we want it to increment by 10. So we'd adjust the step value argument to 10 and do this. Okay. So that's the basic idea of the sequence function. Now let's use this to create our calendar. We basically want to create a range of how many rows? Well, I think at most we're going to need about six rows to display any given month. And we're going to need seven columns, one for each day of the week. So let's start with that and hit enter. And now this is looking pretty good, but the thing we need to address is we have to make sure that the first day of the month falls in the correct column. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. If January 1st, 2030 was a Sunday, which it's not, but if it was, then we'd want the number one to appear in the Sunday column, right? And if January 1st, 2030 was a Monday, then we'd want one to appear in the Monday column, which means the sequence would have to start at zero, so that it would go zero and then one. And if January 1st, 2030 was a Tuesday, we'd want one to appear in the Tuesday column, which means the sequence would have to start at minus one, so it could go to zero, so that it could get to one, okay? So in this example, what we need to do is determine the weekday of whatever date is here. The good news is, it's easy. Excel has a function for that, it's called weekday. And basically, this will return the weekday number of the given date. Enter. So by default, the weekday function returns 1 to represent Sunday, Monday is represented with a 2, Tuesday is with a 3, and so on and so forth. So in this case, what the weekday function is telling us is that January 1st, 2030 is the third weekday, starting at Sunday. So 1, 2, 3. So this is a Tuesday. That means we want the number one to appear in the Tuesday column. That means we'd need to change the sequence to start at minus one. Let's see how that looks. The sequence starts at minus one, then it goes to zero, then the first day of the month, which is a Tuesday, starts right here. So that's perfect. The problem with this is this is not dynamic, right? This will not change even if we change the month number. 
So what we need to do is figure out a way to define this based on the weekday. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use the choose function. And what we're basically going to do is say choose a result based on the weekday number. So let me pass the weekday value of this cell. And if you recall, if, if the weekday was a 1, we want the sequence to start at 1. If the weekday is a 2, then we want the 1 to appear in the Monday column, so we need the sequence to start at 0. If the weekday is a 3, it's Tuesday, so we need the sequence to start at minus 1, and then it starts getting easier to conceptualize because then we go to minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and then minus 5. And then we just close the function down. And now let's hit enter and see if we got it. So we don't need this anymore, so let's go with this here. This starts at minus 1, and that's because this is a Tuesday, and so the first day of the month starts on Tuesday, which is looking good. If we change this to a 2, then we get February, and actually I need to confirm what day of the week that is, so actually we need this weekday function. Let's go over here, here, and here, and enter. Okay. So this is a 6, so that means day 1 should be in the Friday column, which it is. And for March, this should be a 6, and Friday is a 6, that looks good. Let's go with April. This weekday is a 2. So that is a Monday, so the number one starts on Monday. So this is looking good and this is working. So basically what we have at this point is the day numbers are populating in the correct columns and all that remains is some cosmetics, okay? So what we wanna do is first we wanna hide the days that fall outside of the current month. So we'll do that first. And then we want to clean this header up and apply some formatting and stuff like that. So let's start by hiding the day numbers that are outside of the current month. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use conditional formatting. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than. And I'm going to say if this cell value is less than 1, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to go to custom format and we're gonna select a custom number format, and we're gonna give it three semicolons. That basically means just don't display anything. And we can click OK, and now that looks good. And now let's go ahead and get rid of the values that are larger than the largest day of the month. Again, we'll go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. How do we wanna format everything that is greater than? Okay, so what is it gonna be greater than? It's gonna be greater than the day number of EO month, which is end of month, which is the last day of the month of this value and zero for current month, close the EO month function, close the day function. So basically we're saying for any day numbers that are bigger than the last day of the month, we're going to go ahead and use a custom format. And once again, we're going to use three semicolons, which basically just hides those values. And now we've got that. So that looks good. Then we need to to make this look better. So um, I'm just going to go into custom format and I'm going to go with four M's, which is the month name fully spelled out, four Y's, which is the year number. I'm going to click OK. And then I want to span this over here. So I'm going to go back to format cells, alignment, center cross selection. That looks pretty good. Now, if we want, we could apply some additional cell styles. That'd be fine. Let's go with uh, this one. Maybe let's make it bold. That's fine. Uh, maybe we want to increase the font size. Sure. Uh, let's grab this stuff. Maybe we'll apply this kind of style. That's fine. Uh, maybe we want to go with explanatory. That's fine. Maybe for the Sunday and Saturday columns, maybe we want to use the explanatory for that as well. That's fine. You can format the cosmetics however you'd like. But there, I basically think we got it. So the user wants to see February of 2020. They've got it. They want to see January of 2010. They got it. They want to see December of 2016. They got that. Or January of 2030. They got that. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, hopefully that helps. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and be sure to turn on notifications so you won't miss our new Excel videos. If you'd like to receive free weekly Excel tips delivered to your inbox, please sign up for the Excel University blog. If you'd like to learn more about our structured on-demand Excel training programs, please check out the Excel University website, 
All skill levels are welcome. This video is a production of Excel University. 